Which founder signed all four major documents of the American Revolution? Hi Founder fans, Jason here, and today's founder is Roger Sherman. Now I actually did make a video about Roger Sherman way back when I first started my channel, but as with most YouTube channels, my earlier work wasn't necessarily my best, and Roger Sherman definitely deserves a second shot. So, Sherman started founding America 25 years before the American Revolution when he wrote a pamphlet whose title was A Caveat Against Injustice, An Inquiry into the Evils of a Fluctuating Medium of Exchange. And it sounds like a long title, but that's actually the abbreviated version. They were really, really intense with their titles back in the day. And a caveat against injustice argued against paper currencies because Connecticut was having problems, where he was from, with uh, states like New York and Rhode Island coming in and using their money, which was less valuable, to buy Connecticut products. And he argued for a gold standard, or at the time, uh, it was a specie standard, it, it, the standard was based on Spanish dollars. But the point is the same, that there are people today who argue the American dollars should be on the gold standard. That argument comes from Roger Sherman, all the way back in the early 1750s. Roger Sherman at this point was just a simple shoemaker who had worked his way up to become a merchant across the street from Yale University, and he was becoming a lawyer and a leader in Connecticut. By 1774, he was an outspoken uh, rebel, and he was sent to the First Continental Congress where he signed the Articles of Association, then he went to the Second Continental Congress where he signed the Declaration of Independence, then he went back to the Second Continental Congress and signed the Articles of Confederation. After seven years in Philadelphia, the war was finally won and Sherman went back home. He was sent back to the Continental Congress for one year, then came back again, uh, and then he was sent to the Constitutional Convention. And here is where Roger Sherman really made his mark. At 66 years old, he was the second oldest person at the Constitutional Convention, second only to Benjamin Franklin. And Franklin was mostly quiet there. He was already 81 and, and, and close to the end of his life. And he was more of a uh, spiritual guide, guider, if you will, as opposed to Roger Sherman, who spoke all early and often. And he spoke throughout the convention. He was one of the most frequent speakers at the Constitutional Convention. And Roger Sherman would go on to uh, orchestrate the Connecticut Compromise. So at the time, at the Constitutional Convention, the big debate was, okay, do we have the representatives chosen based on the same amount per state, or do we have it based on population? And this argument was taking place, and the big states and the little states were having at each other, and Roger Sherman came along and essentially created the government as we know it today. He said maybe the United States Senate should have two people per state, and the House of Representatives should be based on population. And if that sounds familiar, that's because that's how the United States government works. I should also note that uh, uh, Oliver Ellsworth and, and uh, William Samuel Johnson, both also of Connecticut, did help orchestrate this, so I need to give credit where credit's due, but Roger Sherman was one of, if not the main players in creating this system of government. He also had many, since he spoke out so much, many other influences on the creation of the United States government. After that was done, he signed the Constitution, making it the fourth, and he being the only person to sign all four major documents of the American Revolution. He then went and became an inaugural member of the House of Representatives, and after two years in that position, he was chosen as a United States Senator. And unfortunately, he only served as a Senator for two years because he passed away in office at 72 years old. And that is the story of Roger Sherman. Now, I personally love Roger Sherman because I found the more obscure founders writing a, a paper when I was in college, and I just so happened to choose Roger Sherman to write about. And because of that, when I graduated, my graduation gift is my current prize possession, which is this, which you cannot see over there, but right here is Roger Sherman's autograph. He didn't sign an autograph just for me. No, no, it's actually a receipt from, the seven, from 1760, but my parents were nice enough to get it for me. Thanks again, Mom and Dad, even though it's been quite a while since I graduated college. Uh, so that's the story of Roger Sherman. He is possibly the most underappreciated American in history. When it comes to the founding, um, Robert Morris and uh, John Dickinson and maybe Governor Morris are, are, are also right there. Like they should be more appreciated right with Roger Sherman and everyone should know his name in America, but most of us don't. I hope this inspired you to go look up more about Roger Sherman and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit like uh, and if you're new here, definitely subscribe. I put out videos about the American founding five days a week. Plus on Saturday, we have a fun live one. Come join us for that. Thanks again and I look forward to bringing you another founder tomorrow.